this used to be the motivation for my LSD taking. It seemed to me that you could sit down in a room with someone and begin to, this is maybe what I'm trying to do with you, but we never get there. <laughs> sit down in a room with someone and begin to have a conversation that would take it apart. Take it apart and leave no, nothing there. You know, at the end, no guru, no method, no teacher, and no nothing else either. Uh, I think that the world is held together by a misunderstanding. And that if you could overcome that misunderstanding, it would just uh, fold up and deconstruct. And uh, that in a sense, this is what the concept of enlightenment is. I think it's a, it's a f series of insights or thoughts or revelations, one which projects forward into another, which leads you to just say, oh, it's not this, and it's not that, and it's not this, and then, yeah. Well, I guess the, the mundane plane is the misunderstanding. Uh, it's, and I guess the, then if we analyze the mundane plane, we see what constitutes the misunderstanding. A belief in three-dimensional space and time, a belief in the finite life of the organism, uh, and then the rupture of the mundane plane leads to this kind of platonic superspace where there seems then to rest uh, incontrovertible truths. They are not truths approached by logic and argument. They are self-evidently true. So they're either true for you or, or they're not true. And uh, shamanism then sort of views all this very uh, optimistically, takes the existence of this transmundane world as a higher world, a world in which healing can be done and uh, the, the community can be made to cohere. And, uh, and the shaman is, a, is essentially a technician wiring and repairing and moving behind the board of culture, keeping all these lines open and, uh, and together. Is that where your interest lies? Well, yes, I see. So uh, apparently, it seems to me that it, it looks like mind is something that if we were to make an analogy, it's somewhat like sulfur, in that sulfur has this weird quality of having two melting points. You, you know, you have solid yellow sulfur, and you heat it, and it melts but then you keep heating it and it turns back into a solid and you continue heating it and it melts again this is a curious property of sulfur but not magical uh, the human mind seems to me to be like that it's something that in the mundane plane it has collapsed down into a tool for threat detection and social account keeping basically but when you go alone or with your nearest and dearest to wilderness or places where you feel secure and you perturb the chemical foundations of consciousness then this is the equivalent of heating the sulfur and lo and behold a new geometry is cast out of the fluid mercury of the of the psychedelicized mind and uh, I think I said this morning I really favor a geometric model I think that the shaman's power comes from the fact that the shamans really are seeing things from a higher dimensional perspective that that's not a metaphor or an analogy that that's the voice of mathematics speaking and because I, as I analyze, um, you know, the history of biology 
and higher animals and culture and so forth. What I see as a continuous theme from the very beginning is the conquest of dimensionality. Uh, life conquers dimensions. Life begins as a fixed slime in one place with no eyes, no ears, no nothing. And it evolves tactile awareness. Then it slowly becomes through the sequestering of pigment sensitive cells onto its surface. It acquires the notion of a gradient of light and darkness. And then through the formation of lenses, it's able to stabilize an impression of the exterior world. It evolves progressively more advanced forms of locomotion. Eventually it evolves memory and complex cognitive interior maps for anticipating the future. This is a description of a strategy for the conquest of dimensionality. And I think really the shamans are the people among us who represent the next evolutionary level.